Part 1. The Public Speaking Beast. Chapter 1. Step into the Public Forum. My first memory of public speaking was in the fourth grade. I was asked to present some topic that I can't even recall in front of a class of about 20 students. What I remember is the heat running up to my face and head and the heart palpitations that caused greater tension and fear as I walked to the front of the room. After what I remember to be a dreadful display of public speaking, I became disoriented. I walked down the wrong aisle and sat down in someone else's seat. This frightful performance was followed a few years later as I awaited my turn to present to my 7th grade class. I misread the ending of a classmate's presentation and prematurely went to the front of the room, not knowing what to do. I sat frozen on the desk beside her while she spent the next five minutes finishing her thoughts. I was dumbfounded and could only hope the entire class could not see the panic running through me from my mistake, all the while dreading the embarrassing performance to come. I could go on with many other stories that show my own failure in the public forum. Instead of focusing on the paralyzing potential of the public speaking world in this book, I will share with you the observations and lessons that have taught me to be a confident and successful speaker. I want to teach you how to change the fear that freezes so many of us into positive energy so that you can not only survive a public speaking experience, but can gain the confidence needed to want to share your message with others. Public speaking fear emerges early on as childhood inhibitions slowly turn to hesitation and angst. We'll discuss some of these sources of stage fright shortly. We each have our individual reasons for why stepping in front of a group of people becomes so daunting. I know firsthand the physical and mental anguish of stepping into a public forum when my words became gibberish and my thoughts left my mind. I've had to work hard to gain control of my faculties to be able to successfully share thoughts, feelings, and stories in such a way that people want to listen to me. Shockingly, I can't wait to do it now. This learned confidence has made me successful both personally and professionally. As a public speaker and author, I've taken the lessons and observations that have worked for me and turned them into practical tips that speakers at all levels can use. My approach teaches hands-on, realistic applications that can be implemented right away. I can't say that it's not as hard as it looks to stand in front of a group of people, but I can say that implementing the information in this book will make the experience easier and, believe it or not, even enjoyable. In this age of headline news and information overload, who has time to read a book on public speaking? We decide we will work on these skills later when we have more time. Maybe simply avoiding the topic will somehow make the fear go away. Be aware, it is not a matter of if you will have to speak in public, it is a matter of when. Will you have to give a Thanksgiving dinner toast? Will you have to make a cold sale to a new potential client? Do you have a burning question as an audience member, but are too scared to ask it? Are you sitting at a cocktail party or a business networking event where you don't know anyone and are paralyzed against a wall? There are plenty of books on this subject, ranging from an academic approach diagnosing physical and mental barriers that cause stage fright to guidance on becoming a professional speaker. This book won't show you how to perform academic research on what's going on in your head and body or how to break into the speaking profession. I realize that everyone's motives for improvement will vary. My intentions are to provide speakers of all levels with the foundation to give them the courage to take action to develop and grow. The fact that you picked up this book is a good indicator that you want to improve. My approach is straightforward. Let me intentionally repeat myself. My approach is straightforward. Let's break down the fundamentals of practical public speaking. You will be ahead of the game if you take nothing more out of this book than the following. Number one, effective public speaking is more about confidence than communication skills. Number two, Public speaking is more than a lectern, podium, or microphone. It is everywhere. Number three, the ability to speak publicly is not as hard as you can imagine. The hardest part is taking the first action steps. Number four, 
Public speaking is a learned skill that must continually be developed. And number five, your own success, both personally and professionally, is directly related to your ability to communicate effectively. These fundamentals will permeate the suggestions and recommendations throughout the book. Most people I have coached through public speaking already have some communication skills. Skill levels vary by individual. Many of them can have what seems like a normal conversation in person or over the phone until they hear the phrase, public speaking. I've seen a room full of people freeze in horror when they are asked to step up front to provide a one-minute introduction. Here is a key lesson. Speak of something that you know or that relates to you. Whether you are asked to give a quick introduction or a full keynote speech, integrate familiar stories into the presentation. Why? Because you know yourself better than anyone else does, which should make you more comfortable. This fact alone should give you a small dose of confidence that you know what will be coming out of your mouth next. Although the majority of references in this book involve public speaking, many of the roadblocks to successful speaking are not about the speaking portion of communication at all. We can all improve our ability to formulate a thought and then express it. However, a large hurdle people run into is confidence. How can you gain confidence? Having someone tell you that you need to increase your confidence is like having someone tell you to relax when you are tense. It's not easy, but there are specific steps we can take to become more confident. Confidence can be gained through preparation, practice, and repetition. The fact that you are familiar with the material you are about to present should be a powerful boost. Every time you do some form of public speaking, a little bit of discomfort or anxiety goes away. Look for small wins. You may not notice the gains immediately, and the discomfort may not go away completely, but you will start to realize that you are improving. If you want proof, simply videotape yourself for a week. Give a short, prepared speech. The length is not relevant. Tape the presentation each day for a week. I can promise you that you will see improvements that will bring a smile to your face. Imagine taking that feeling over weeks and months and years. Find ways to knock down your personal barriers one step at a time and turn your uncomfortable situations into manageable situations that will result in greater confidence. Not everyone is scrambling to jump behind a lectern unless it's to hide or command a stage to extend a message. Have you ever run into someone in the hall at work? Have you ever been interviewed? Have you ever been in a business presentation where you were asked a question and needed a quick response? Everyday situations surround us where, if we had confidence in ourselves, we could turn our fear into success. Don't fool yourself into thinking that you can avoid public communication. Your success is often directly aligned with your ability to confidently present yourself. It is obviously a fact that we are surrounded with everyday interactions that can change the perceptions we have about ourselves and the perceptions other people have about us. Imagine taking action on your desire to improve your confidence. You can do anything you set your sights on. You can be the person, communicator, and leader you want to be. Your improved confidence and skills can translate into promotions, better interpersonal relationships, or just about any other goals you've set. As someone constantly on the go with work and life, I have often felt I didn't have the time to address my public speaking shortcomings. I was too busy in the daily grind to lift my head up enough to see that if I improved my communication skills and confidence, I could improve other things like my leadership and time management skills. For example, when I managed a team of about 15 people, I constantly found myself answering the same questions over and over or repeating myself. I learned to confidently convey messages and expectations that were clear, concise, and actionable. Guess what? I found myself saving time by not repeating myself and, more importantly, started to see people taking the actions to be autonomous because they started to believe in themselves. I began to believe that I had the ability to inspire others. Improving yourself is not as hard as you think. 
the fact that you want to improve is a huge step. I chose to join Toastmasters International. Toastmasters is a proven method to improve communication and leadership skills with approximately 270,000 members in 13,000 clubs worldwide. Their mission statement reads, The mission of a Toastmasters club is to provide a mutually supportive and positive learning environment in which every individual member has the opportunity to develop oral communication and leadership skills, which in turn foster self-confidence and personal growth. Joining Toastmasters is not a prerequisite or the only way to improve public speaking skills, but it is a methodical approach to self-paced learning in an encouraging environment. Before you start your journey, have a goal in mind. Obviously, this goal will evolve, but you need a starting point. When you reach this goal, set another, slightly higher goal. For example, if you simply want to confidently read a story to kids in the library, then keep working toward it. You can start reading in front of a mirror to yourself. Once you are comfortable, ask family and friends to listen to you. After you are comfortable with them, then you can go to the library, ready to read to the kids. You are surrounded with opportunities. You simply have to cross the threshold. Crossing the threshold to take action is hard only if you are holding yourself back. I worked with an individual to improve her confidence level in order to be able to lead her team of 20 people in a daily morning meeting. When I suggested joining Toastmasters, she said she'd been thinking about it for a long time. The next natural question was, why not join now? I heard the same excuses and comments I hear far too often. I don't have the time. I need to work it into my schedule. Or, I have it on my to-do list. That to-do list is not getting any shorter, nor is it getting enough action. I gently pressed on to say that the improvement happens only when the person is ready to take the action to improve. Her completed Toastmasters application was on my desk a couple of hours later. She is now on her way to becoming more successful. These practical tips are intended to be a reference guide for you. This book isn't about staying ahead of the curve with what's hot, I like to call it flavor of the day business jargon, or creating and using buzzwords. This is about the fundamental tools of public speaking. The tools reference will remain timeless. I would be naive to say that communications have not advanced. We have all evolved to different communication channels, from rotary phones to smartphones where we can tweet our own message to hundreds, thousands, or millions of people at once, to webinars as a way of public speaking. What will remain constant, however, is the need to communicate our messages clearly and confidently. No matter what the means of communications are, we will still need these critical skills. Public speaking is a learned skill that can and should be developed, refined, and honed. I do not believe that some people have it and some people don't. Everyone can pick up these skills. As with most things, the more you do it, the more comfortable and successful you will be. Public speaking is a learned skill that needs nurturing. Not all chapters in this book will be relevant to your speaking evolution at the same time. However, as you grow with your skills and abilities, different chapters will meet your evolving needs and timing. The information will show you how and what to do to make a difference personally and professionally. The tips are easy to follow and easy to implement. Exercising your public speaking ability will stimulate your whole being until these abilities become locked into your inner core. Despite what you may have heard, public speaking shouldn't be scarier than death. Public speaking is a skill waiting to be harnessed before your death. Congratulations, you are about to start your journey to success. To success. To success. Chapter 2. Find the Sources of Stage Fright. You are approaching the lectern for the big presentation, or you're about to have the interview that will change the course of your life. You get dizzy. Your heart pounds. Your mouth gets dry. It seems to happen every time you need most to be calm, cool, and collected. What if you understood the root causes of your stage fright and anxiety? Understanding the sources of stage fright will enable you, the potential speaker, to take the steps necessary to address the fright head on. The choice is fight or flight. 
It's time to fight back and get you to be the calm, cool, collected person you can be. Make the anxiety go away. It may not be possible to make it go away fully, but wouldn't you like to have command over these feelings so you can take advantage of these opportunities presented to you? Stage fright can be categorized as biological, psychological, social, cultural, or a combination of all of the above. Some people might stop reading here and say that there is far too much to go through to solve the public speaking anxiety, so maybe avoiding it altogether is the best course of action. I wish it was that easy. Depending on your job, for example, it may be a little easier to avoid these situations. However, what happens when you're asked to be the best man or maid of honor in a wedding? What if you are forced into the unfortunate duty of delivering a close friend's eulogy? What if you want to buy a car and need to negotiate? It should be becoming clear that avoiding public speaking situations isn't as easy as you might think, because they are everywhere. When you learn to address the symptoms straight on rather than avoiding the situation entirely, you will find that each new situation will get a little easier. Your confidence level will skyrocket. You may not notice it right away, but the invested time to practice and prepare will pay off in the end. Can you unlearn the pent-up fears that have kept you from being your best? My wife often notes that I've successfully untrained everything she has taught our dog. Therefore, I have to believe we can turn the tides on our own emotions and confidence level. I know what you're thinking. Can't you just give me medication? Is there an app for that? In a culture where we are constantly looking for a quick fix, they are available. If you do a search on iTunes, for example, it will bring up podcasts and applications relating to the topic of public speaking and stage fright. As far as medication, some jokingly may say, have a drink. I've read many books and articles on public speaking that reference the use of alcohol to calm nerves. All have very clearly stated the obvious risk of overindulgence. When you go beyond the calming of nerves, you begin to impact your ability to think and speak clearly. There are similar risks associated with taking medications, which only conceal the symptoms for a little while. You must remember that public speaking is everywhere, so reaching for medication may suffice for that one-time event, but may not always be there for a chance meeting that can change your life. The website www.changethatsrightnow.com was one of many sources offering tips for quick resolution to stage fright. There are many medications suggested to combat anxiety and stage fright. The organization Change That's Right Now describes the following three medications. Quote, beta blockers are used for relieving performance anxiety. They work by blocking the flow of adrenaline that occurs when you're anxious. While beta blockers don't affect the emotional symptoms of anxiety, they can control physical symptoms such as shaking hands or voice, sweating, and rapid heartbeat. Antidepressants can be helpful when the feelings of fear are severe and debilitating. Three specific antidepressants, Paxil, Effexor, and Zoloft, have been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Benzodiazepines are fast-acting anti-anxiety medications. However, they are sedating and addictive, so they are typically prescribed only when other medications have not worked, unquote. As with any discussion about medication, please check with your doctor before taking it to fully understand the impact it may have on your mind and body. My caution for these suggestions, besides the side effects that may take some television commercials far too long to disclose to meet the regulations, at least in the United States, is the fact that the taking of this medication does not get to the root cause of the issue. Drugs are for short-term solutions. In fact, I think solution is probably too strong a word. I think it should actually be mask the symptoms. There are long-term, sustainable resolutions to control the onset of symptoms of stage fright. For those individuals willing to invest the time, they can have a lifetime of success versus a temporary fix you might find by going straight to the medicine cabinet. In our anxiety over public speaking, our thoughts instantly go to a scene of us standing at a lectern in front of hundreds of people. Culturally, we're brought up from the time we were young to believe that public speaking and anxiety is synonymous. 
It would almost seem unnatural if I didn't include the statement that most people fear it more than death. This cultural myth has permeated our thoughts from the beginning, so we often perpetuate the myth by doing everything possible to avoid public speaking situations. We are inadvertently taught about fearing fear itself. We often create our own self-fulfilling prophecies. You can run from those presentations in front of hundreds of people periodically. However, each day presents itself with new challenges we could rise above if we simply learn the appropriate techniques to effectively communicate in a public setting, regardless of whether it is with one person or with thousands. Anxiety is glossed over in a small section of many public speaking books as being an inevitable part of the equation. Unfortunately, either through genes, which prove that some of us have a higher propensity for this type of anxiety, or cultural inundation of the horrors of public speaking, we all believe we can simply suffer through the few times we'll be required to speak publicly. In some cases, we are pointed toward a quick fix design to simply get us through a single moment. My goal is to get you to stand tall and confidently present yourself in a commanding and influential manner that will cause the receiver of your message to take notice as a result of the power of your words, gestures, and vocal inflection. I want you to be able to stand in front of a crowd with a smile on your face and truly mean it. That smile will show the world that you are having fun and that your messages are being heard. I can teach you that the rising heat up the sides of your neck in a flushing face should be an afterthought rather than something that impacts your ability to attain your public speaking goals. In fact, let's strike the afterthought comment and set a goal to not even think about it at all. With preparation and practice, it is possible. I have an almost existential view of public speaking. Don't psych yourself up so much that it takes away from your ability to rationally state the points necessary to make an impact. And don't talk yourself down so much that the audience's enthusiasm wanes at your own lack of passion. Repeating the same words, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this, as you struggle to stand upright on your walk to the lectern most likely won't strengthen your presentation. In addition, the repeated mantra won't resolve your deep-seated fear unless the true investment of practice and preparation are also part of the process. Stage fright may not ever go away, but it can be controlled with the right invested actions and efforts. These actions and efforts will most likely all filter back to practice and preparation. Public speaking is a journey that needs the roller coaster ride for the audience to feel the emotions that you're feeling. The audience wants to be a part of your message and success. They want to walk away with some meaningful, inspirational, or motivational message. Public speaking surrounds us. It is a normal fact in our life and culture. Although technology has changed how we communicate, for the most part, we still can't avoid the need to interact in some way on a regular basis. Even if you are more on the latter half of fight or flight when it comes to hitting the topic head on, you will need to use many aspects of public speaking, such as writing or sending a message. Some people would rather communicate behind a computer screen within social media channels, but in this book, you will also learn the importance of the written word and understand what your message says about you, the writer. Your personal and professional success is directly linked to your ability to communicate effectively. Communicate effect. Chapter 3. Tame the beast. I just finished a speech for the local Rotary Club. I confidently explained that a few years before, I would have had difficulty presenting to them. Even as a communication major with over 20 years in the corporate world, communicating face-to-face -face or presenting in front of multiple people created far too many anxious moments in my life that I've repressed from my memory. My experience and background may make some non-believers say that I couldn't have been that bad. I must emphasize that it was that bad. I've been demoted twice in my career and was told that I would never reach senior management because I was never seen in the role. Yet I can confidently tell you that I've never been happier or more satisfied personally or professionally. In the midst of a downturned economy, I've had more raises, promotions, and increases in job responsibility than I could have ever imagined. I'm doing things I never dreamed of, including writing two books and being part of the National Speakers Association. 
I give much of the credit for my transformation to my increased confidence level. Learning to get over my stage fright saved my career and created an abundant amount of new opportunities to succeed. Most people want to improve themselves, including a countless many that have a targeted desire to improve their public speaking skills. The most difficult part is crossing over the threshold from change thinking to change actions. As an example, just look at the countless New Year's resolutions broken immediately after we announce we want to improve ourselves. What I want to provide is a guide to ensure you stay on the right track toward achieving your goals. Have you ever been lost while driving without having an accessible map or GPS? We have an instant panic attack about what we need to do. The anxiety builds up more with each wrong turn. We lose our ability to think clearly and make rational thoughts. The exact same feeling occurs when we approach the podium to give a speech. Our mind plays tricks on us, which impacts our body. What if you can control, if not even block these feelings, so you are able to clearly and confidently articulate your points. I've seen people with normally rampant stage fright who have given amazing eulogies. I found it interesting that these individuals were so caught up in the anguish of death that they forgot, even if for a small moment, that they were supposed to be scared to be in front of a large audience. The thought of the death instantly jumped them to the last stages of what experienced speakers are taught. It's not about you. It's about them, the audience. The frightened thoughts are substituted for ones of passion and love for the deceased. With regular public speaking, you can take actions that will allow you to give rousing speeches and presentations that you once thought were never possible. As a general rule of thumb, our minds are often numb to the potential triumph because we are too occupied with the heart-stopping anticipation of what is in front of us. What if you could be trained to think about the end game and the potential success? It is possible. This book will cover many ways to identify the varying symptoms that often come with the pending act of public speaking. The symptoms are driven by deep-seated causes that we may not even fully understand about ourselves yet. When you fully recognize the correlation between the onsets of symptoms with the ability to control your thoughts, you will see exponentially greater success and get a deeper understanding of your own potential. This practical guide provides examples and techniques that will make it real for you. It will show you that speakers of all levels of experience and anxiety will be capable to refrain their hearts and minds one tip at a time. The ultimate goal is to control the symptoms and more importantly, use them to your advantage to relate to any audience. Here are some examples as to why we get anxious when we think about speaking in public. Uncomfortable situation, new environment, potential failure, possible embarrassment, fear of boring the audience, inexperience, anticipation buildup. Each of these examples can create the symptoms we fear. Dizzy head, heart pounding, shaking, sweating, shallow breathing, and that sick feeling in our stomachs. These symptoms most likely will never go away completely, but they can be controlled with practice and preparation. In Janet Esposito's book, Getting Over Stage Fright, A New Approach to Resolving Your Fear of Public Speaking and Performing, she discusses approaches that tie in the inclusion of spirituality and meditation to get the mind and body stabilized to find, quote, inner strength for outward support, unquote. Her premise is based on the need to understand that the escalation of anxiety is completely normal for most of us. Many actors, as they approach the stage, have varying levels of fear, but what makes the experience ones different is their ability to teach themselves to transfer these feelings to their art. The important fact is that there is a direct correlation between your ability to tame the mind and your ability to control the body. I took a class in college more than 20 years ago on visualization. As I walked into the first class laughing, I was expecting some easy credits. It was taught by one of the university's sports coaches, and the class was full of athletes. The study of visualizing in sports psychology was a growing field at the time and was not fully understood. We were asked to take one routine act, such as shooting foul shots, 
and start tracking our progress physically as we slowly introduce new mental practices to calm ourselves down. The intent was to visualize our own success and growth through true focus. I was skeptical for much of the semester. I selected a three-mile run that I had been doing for years. I had been doing it for so long that I typically finished close to the same finish time each day. I saw very little room for improvement. There may have been some times when I could sprint through it for a quick, event-driven improvement, but the goal of the class exercise was sustained improvement. I watched in amazement as I worked on my breathing techniques, on measuring my stride, on keeping my arms straight rather than having them come across my chest, and, most importantly, on the belief that I could accomplish more. My times continued to go down regularly. I did reach a plateau, but it was at a stabilized level that was far better than my predicted outcome. Visualizing success is now a common practice among athletes, and it can be important to your own success when preparing for situations that cause stage fright. Maybe the old fictional character, Stuart Smalley, played by Al Franken on the Saturday Night Live segment that first aired in 1991, wasn't too far off when he said the following catchphrase into the mirror. You're good enough, you're smart enough, and doggone it, people like you. It is now normal to watch athletes and actors visualize their performances. They are making every effort to stretch their peak performance. I recall seeing Olympic skiers on TV with their eyes closed and hands in motion as they simulated their progress through the course. Their hands move smoothly in unison with their thoughts by going side to side and up and down to mimic the exact course they were about to go down. I believe that they all saw themselves as the winner. Limiting thoughts can significantly impact performance. Shaquille O'Neal was a consistently poor free throw shooter in college and in the NBA. His physical technique was often identified as an issue because of his lack of arc he had when shooting the ball into the hoop. However, as his career continued and more coaches and sports psychologists became involved in his training, his issue was often noted as a mental block. He finished his career with a 52.7% success rate. Wikipedia states that in the NBA, most players make between 70 to 80% of their attempts. A combination of more mental focus, physical preparation, and practice could have increased these results substantially. Some people see the deep-rooted causes of their own public speaking as obstacles too large to break through. We fill ourselves with excuses that it's too hard to try to identify and fix due to personal time constraints. We convince ourselves that it's not worth the effort or we're unable to visualize our own success. I was one of those people until I ironically got more personal in a speech and showed a significant amount of vulnerability. I began to sing on stage for part of the speech. My apprehension turned to confidence when I saw the audience's reaction. I was consistently off-key and had no rhythm, yet there were tears in the eyes of some of the audience members as they began to relate to the message of my story. You can use your own individual hurdles, roadblocks, and triumphs to strengthen your own message. There are many options that can be taken to create synergy between your mind, body, and soul. I am not an expert, so I suggest consulting the professionals. However, psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, and yoga have been identified as potential alternatives to prepare you for the big meeting or your moment on stage. I've even turned to the Nintendo Wii game console to do yoga on the Wii Fitness Balance Board before some of my speech competitions. The exercises are calming and relaxing while it focused my attention away from the building tension. I continued this routine before I got mad at the game. It predicts your fitness age based on certain physical tests. At the age of 40, it continued to tell me that I was 60 years old. That was not helping my mental stability. I needed to visualize success, not being 20 years older. Once we understand the potential causes of the fear, we can take the actions to build our confidence level. The psychology of fear can have a devastating direct link to the physical effects of the built-up symptoms. An article from www.owningthestage.com notes that there are certain things that you can't control, such as, quote, your gene. Some people are simply more prone to anxiety than others. And if you're unlucky in the DNA, you probably know it. Blame your parents. With the genetic factor, you have to play the hand you were dealt, unquote. 
This argument still allows for the possibility that we have the ability to control much of the causes around us. We will cover much of this in detail later in the book. The article does go on to state that, quote, it's only in your mind. It's important to understand that stage fright is subjective. It exists only in your mind and your own perception. It might be painful, but it's not like a poke in the eye. It's a purely inner struggle. Sometimes, stage fright can feed on itself, like when you're deathly afraid of getting stage fright. It might seem crazy, but we're not talking about rational, logical thoughts here. This leads to a kind of perfect storm of anxiety. You might make a little mistake, like a slightly out-of-tune note, or a badly timed entrance, or a loss of balance. That triggers a bit of anxiety, which kicks off your overblown fear of anxiety, which causes a few more mistakes and so on until you faint or have a coronary or at least consider faking one. And even though stage fright is only in your mind, it is still very real for a lot of people." Unquote. The Eric Education Resource Information Center notes that many inadequate theories of stage fright tie to the, quote, cumulative effects of emotions, unquote, that include, quote, neurological body reaction in a two-factor theory of body reactions in environmental cues, unquote. However, they theorize that stage fright goes beyond that to become accumulation of, quote, behavioral, physiological, and the cognitive, unquote. In other words, the behaviors of avoiding the situation of public speaking because of perceived failure or embarrassment leads to physiological symptoms of sweating or shaking that impacts the, quote, consciousness of both, unquote. There is a continuum of mind, body, and behavior actions that are related to each other. All can impact our ability to give our best unless they are controlled. Some ways to prepare for your time in the spotlight include write out what you want to say, Practice by repeating the message often. Increase your stage time. And be a student of yourself. Specifically, being a student of yourself can include your ability to be more willing to be open to feedback and videotaping. As you continue your public speaking growth through mental and physical preparation, you will be taught how to visualize success and how to get to know the audience. Additionally, you will begin to truly believe that the audience wants to listen to your message and understand that not all of your feelings are fear. Some of your built-up anticipation may just be excitement to be there. On the physical front, you can prepare with deep breathing, stretching out the tension, avoiding caffeine, exercising prior to the presentation, and staying within your routine if possible. Many of these tips will be detailed in later chapters. You can become a solid public speaker or simply someone who doesn't faint when they do it. It takes time and effort. However, the preparation practice are easily accomplished with a commitment to get better and are not as difficult as you think. The beast of public speaking can be tamed. You can find the way to sustain success. It is time to cross over the threshold from wanting to change to actual change. Chapter 13. Play to your strengths. What makes you happy? Which subjects are you a master of? I'm not the greatest humorous storyteller around. Although I am improving, humorous storytelling is not my strength. I have plenty of funny stories, but my delivery and passion are better geared towards inspiration and motivational messaging. I can sprinkle humorous anecdotes throughout a presentation to emphasize points, but I stick to my strengths. You should continue to work on your own aspects that need improving, but keep to what makes you special. The differentiating factors should be a focal point of your speeches. If you are a high-energy speaker, get out from behind the lectern and use the stage to your advantage. Your strengths are a direct reflection of your confidence level, and as you play more to these strengths, the chances are much greater that you will deliver a stellar performance. Chapter 14. Do something with your hands and arms. Oh, those pesky hands and arms. Unless the speaker has some natural or rehearsed specific movements, many speakers' hands and arms have been known to flail around, hide in pockets, perch on hips, hide behind backs, clench into fists. 
This chapter is intentionally placed under the anxiety category because nothing screams nerves more than people uncomfortable with their arms and hands. As formal as it may appear at first, always have your arms at your side unless they are in the middle of intentional actions or come up as a natural movement. The hands should always be unclenched. A clenched fist is a... Chapter 103. Share your vulnerability. We have all had an argument, we have all made mistakes, and we have all been nervous. We all share some common ground, whether it's our backgrounds, stories, or situations. When you share those moments, they will resonate instantly with lots of audiences. Many inexperienced speakers are too cautious in their approach to sharing their vulnerabilities and mistakes with the crowd. In my early speaking career, I kept things at a high level. I could have almost been described as vanilla in my early speeches. They were surface only and didn't dive into who I really was. It was only after I started to open my soul and share personal stories that I began to hold the interest of my audiences. I've seen speakers who have hung on tight to intimate details that would most likely hit home with the audience. I know that these speakers have something poignant to be shared, but it remained bottled up. If the topic made sense, and it was still appropriate to share in order to connect with the audience, why wouldn't they? We are sometimes too self-conscious to let it all out, but your success with the audience almost depends on doing so. You may even find a little therapy for yourself. At least I did. I have obviously included in this book many of the mistakes I have made as a speaker. What you should also see is the journey and learning that followed. Lead your own audience through to your final destination. Your takeaway message. An effective way to get there is with moving, personal, relatable stories that leave you exposed enough to hit the audience right in their hearts and heads.